to the Drexel Sports Zone, the show where we recap all things Drexel and Philadelphia sports. I am your host, Luciano Duffy. Let's jump right into it. The Birds in Black battled and beat Joe Judge's Giants 22-21. to In a primetime Thursday night matchup, Carson Wentz and the boys found a way to come back in the fourth quarter to win and ultimately put the Eagles solely in first place of the NFC East. And yes, that's with a 2-4-1 record. Maybe that tie against the Bengals is starting to pay off for Doug Peterson's Eagles. And with Washington knocking off Dallas on Sunday, the Birds get the luxury of staying in first place for the whole week. But anyway, back to the game. Carson Wentz targeted 10 different receivers as he threw for 359 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. For the G-Men, Daniel Jones threw only 187 yards with two touchdowns and one interception as well. His biggest play came from his legs as he blew by the Eagles defense, but was ultimately tackled by the 20 yard line, stopping his 80 yard run just short of the end zone. Jones was able to lead the Giants to a 21 to 10 fourth quarter lead. However, with time still left on the clock, the Eagles were innocent until proven guilty, fighting against Joe Judge. The Eagles defense did steal the ball away from the Giants multiple times as the Green Goblin had an interception and Brandon Graham had a strip sack to end the game. Wentz, with the gang of Mr. Boston Scott and Greg Warden, were able to stay out of jail and return home safely with a win. The Eagles field was painted with the words Philadelphia votes during this Thursday night matchup. Please go vote and watch Foresight 2020 for all your debate and political news. With the Giants game behind, Eagles attention shifts to Dallas. Another primetime matchup for the Birds as they play on Sunday night, but even I think it should be flexed out of that spot. The Cowboys are down to their third string quarterback and simply haven't looked the same without Dak Prescott. The Eagles should handle business, but if I've learned anything this season, it's that they'll keep it way closer than it needs to be. Deshaun Jackson's return to the lineup was short-lived as he took a cheap shot on a punt in the Giants game. As he heads to the IR, his speed will be replaced by Jalen Rager. Rager was the Eagles' first round pick this year, and he is coming back from a thumb injury but is slated to return. The 76ers continue to shake things up in their front office as they add Jamar Nelson to their staff. The former NBA All-Star will be the team's scout and assistant general manager of the Delaware Bluecoats. Nelson adds to the list of former NBA players hired by the Sixers, including Roy Hibbert, World Be Free, and general manager Elton Brand. The Pennsylvania native brings his 14 years of NBA experience to Philadelphia, where he is praised for his leadership and basketball IQ. In all NBA news, there is talks of starting a new season right around Christmas, and it will be shortened from 82 to 72 games. This will be tough for teams that have made it far in the playoffs, as their offseason will be much shorter. But that's not a problem for the Sixers, as I remind you that they got swept in the first round. The rumors of trades and signing continue to flood in, and we'll keep you posted when more details become concrete. As Philadelphia gains one dock, they lose another. Mike Doc Emmerich has retired from hockey broadcasting after 47 years. He has called more than 3,700 games, including 22 Stanley Cup Finals. Man, I hope I'm around sports broadcasting for that long. While Emmerich is known for his work 
as the voice of the NHL on NBC and his 22 years as a broadcasting voice of the New Jersey Devils, he did also spend time in the city of Brother Lilov. He worked as a spot announcer for teams' home broadcasts from 1983 to 1986, as well as an in-studio analyst between 1986 and 1988. He then served as the team's lead broadcaster from 1988 through the 1992 season. In his retirement video, he mentioned how much of a pleasure it was to work from home in a studio that NBC created due to the pandemic. At 74 years old, he decided to call it quits, shutting the door on a remarkable career. The shoes that he left behind are massive. On the other end of their career, Elliot Destronier, the 18-year-old fifth-round pick for the Flyers, scored four goals for the Montauk Wildcats as they won 10-2. This performance piqued the interest of Flyer fans everywhere as they got excited about their new prospect. In semi-related Phillies news, their single-A team, the Lakewood Blue Cloths, have rebranded to the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. This rebranding comes with a new slate of logos, caps, and white home jerseys. All I have to say is these logos and jerseys look so clean. You might even catch me in a Blue Claw shirt or jersey in a future episode. They have already added a mini golf course, boardwalk games, and beer garden to their park over the years as this rebranding is just the icing on the cake. In more Phillies news, they have made cuts to their scouting staff. The trickle-down effect continues as the pandemic hits the Phillies right in their pockets, like a wave crashing on the Jersey Shore. There is also speculation on whether or not shortstop D.D. Gregorius will be re-signed. From his interviews, as he seems content to stay or leave, and understands the business of the sport. The Phillies are in a tough position, as they invested over $500 million in player salaries over the past two seasons. And it still feels like there's gaping holes on the team. Their bullpen is awful, and it costs them the season. Star players just continue to leave. The future doesn't look great for the Phillies. But you know who future does look great? Your Drexel Dragons. Our fall teams continue yet another week of zero losses. Man, it feels good to be undefeated. Maybe this is what it feels like to root for the other team in Pennsylvania. And that's all for this week. I'll catch you next time.